Well, today's the big day, isn't it? We find out how good we are against Linfield in a cup final. We find out whether we are finally better than them. We've also got to worry about them in a league because now they're top of the table. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 123 of this Build a Nation story, Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. We are back today to face Glen Torren in a big league game with our reserve side, something that has gone wrong before in this calendar year. And then we, of course, face Linfield in a League Cup final, a real chance to see how good we are. So if you're looking forward to seeing if we bottle it, or if we can finally produce a dominant streak in Northern Ireland, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. We'll also have a look at the end of the transfer window where I don't think an awful lot happened. And we'll of course see what's been happening since you were last here, with a few games played including a massive win last weekend in the Cup. So let's go and have a look at the transfer centre first, because Bobby Harvey we know is going to be leaving the club. We knew what players had come in, but actually only one young player left the club towards the end of the month, so nothing at first team level. Let's have a look at the schedule then of what's been happening on the pitch, because you were with me as we beat Larn by three goals to nil in the cup final, then backed it up against Crusaders with a bit of a rotated side. But after that, five more big wins, one of them on penalty kicks. We beat Crusaders by four goals to nil at home, another one that was very comfortable. Luke Smith and Mark Scully Brace and Damian Dunn got the goals there. A Morris Simpson hat trick was enough at home to Warren Point, with Neil Daly getting a penalty as well. A 2 2 draw against St Johnston in a very good game in the SPFL quarter final. We won on penalties in the end, it was a good bit of goalkeeping to do it. Mark Scully had scored one in the game, Stephen Cowan scored as well. And of course, the two new sign ins scored the first two penalties, which made a big difference to us. A 1-0 win followed against Portadown with Johnny Merivale Austin, the only first teamer playing in that 11. Well, he was the man to make the difference. A good win thanks to him. And in an 8-0 win in the Irish Cup second round, as Damian Dunn got three, and then one apiece for Smith, Parry and Gash with a scully brace in there as well. But look at the next month or so. We've got Linfield to come in a League Cup final today and in a league at the start of March. And to be fair... We must have played them twice already. I forgot about the defeat in December. We've also got Larne to play in the Irish Cup quarter final now and Queen of the South in the SPFL semi final. Add to that, we've got a European tie to come and things are going to get pretty hectic here before too long. That schedule does not look good for March. Linfield, of course, have got to worry about Europe too. They are playing the Cup final against us in between the two legs of their tie against Cagliari. They are the Italian side who are going to be a very strong test, so I'm not sure what's going to happen in that one. But we've just got to focus on ourselves. Get ourselves a win against Glentoran tonight. With a Cup final in a few days, I'm taking no risks. And in fact, it's not actually till Monday. We've got six days. So if anyone's fit, they're going to play. I've changed my mind. Let's go and get into it. It's a big game to come. Let's go and pick our 11. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. Well then, due to a couple of players being a bit fatigued today, I think I've found a way to get all four stars in a team. Damien Dunn is going to drop a bit deeper, Merivale lost in the same, and Mark Scully will go through the middle. The two players that miss out are Luke Smith, the centre-half, and Jordan Gash, the low midfielder. The rest of it is fully fit, so the team for today is Neil Kane in goal, Reed and Raider fullbacks with Goss alongside McKenzie reunited at centre-half. Dunn and Jude the midfield too, Merivale Austin ahead of them, and then Cowan and Parry off Scully up front, and if the lads are able, I'll take another 8-0 win please. Well of course the big news for the host today is that both of our lone players are unable to feature, Mucklehatton had a knock anyway, but Tennant Dykes will be out too. They've also dropped out our former man Barry Coffey, he's on the bench, and Matthew Carson who was a star of our Hemel save last year, he's not involved either. We do see Colin McCann in the attacking midfield role though, he is our former star up front, so let's go and get through it. We want the lads to pick up where they left off with that 8-0 win. Maybe not the last half an hour though, because that was a bit boring. First time I've played all four of these players from the start, done playing as that sort of aggressive Mazala, and the rest of them in their attacking roles. I'm really intrigued to see how it goes, and in fact, Colin McCann is playing in a front two there. It's going to be a big game for us, because it's just that mentality thing of dropping points against them last time. Can we recover from it? And can we get on the front foot early with Gavin Reed? He finds McKenzie. Of course, 
We did score in the seventh minute against them last time and still drew one all. Ferris was the man to score on that occasion and he wins the ball there as they bring it forward into midfield. It's good football to be fair. Hegarty gets it from the 1-2. He's got support out wide from Strong. Through ball is intercepted by Scully. Fair play to the centre forward. He was back in his own box. He tracked his man the whole way. That's incredible work from the big man. As Ray gets it out to Merivale Austin. And now look where he is. Runs down the other end. One on one with a keeper. Who does very well with a good starting position. To get the ball cleared downfield. As Cowan. Big ball over the top. The run is Merivale Austin. Was he onside? I think he's off. I think he's off. He is offside. It's going to be disallowed. There was always a little inkling with the way the lino ran back there. With 10 minutes gone, it stays nil-nil. As Kane plays out from the back to Reed, has space to run into. It's a big pitch at Glensoran, isn't it? Got options at centre-half. McKenzie is one. And you can see the midfielders dropping in there. Damien Dunn. Back to McKenzie again. Really intrigued to see how he plays in there, Dunn, because if we can't get Gash back next year, could well be the way we line up. Lovely football there. Scully's in one-on-one. -on -one. That's a beautiful move. Merivale lost him with the assist. Scully with the goal. Cowan, Dunn, Parry all running in behind. It's just a relentless effort. And defences, they've got four on four a lot of the time. As Ray throws into Goss here. I do love the aggressive style of play. And I kind of wish I'd done it sooner. But I know in my heart of hearts, we didn't have the players beforehand. As Grady on the left, back to Ferry. Cowan chases it, but he can't get there. Hegarty away to Kelly. And to be fair, Glensoran leave two up front. They've got an attacking threat. It's not an easy game this, though Scully trying to make it easier. Finds Parry, great reverse ball, turns provider, then Parry puts it in. It's not been his best season, but he scores again there. And with 14 minutes gone, this should be wrapped up. At the hour mark, we can rest who we want. As here we are with 22 minutes on the clock, Ray brings the ball away downfield. Scully will chase it, he flicks on. Of course he wins the header, but there's no one there. And Charles will deal with it in goal. Big ball over the top. Looking for the centre forward, but Jude is back to help out. And Merivale Austin finds McKenzie. Releases Dunn, who's got space to boot forward. This is the beauty of playing a 4-4-2. So three on two in midfield every time. As Scully's up with the header. Parry gets there on the left. Chance to cross. Three in the middle. One on the edge. Jude finds Merivale Austin. It's a good save. Cleared away downfield. And Reed brings it down. But again, it is relentless pressure. So we're back with another highlight instantly. We just do not stop when we're on a wave of attacks. And here's McKenzie again. Maraval Austin has got the freedom of the pitch, to be honest with you. Up to Parry. It's fallen for Scully. Must have been offside. No, it's not. It must have been off the Glen Torren defender. It's a corner kick, which will be taken. It's going to be Reed who delivers it. Looking for the back post again. Who's going to be up there? Parry's up. McKenzie's up. Nobody wins it. It's out for another one on the other side. Constant pressure. We look absolutely brilliant. It's men against boys this game as Reed puts it to the far post, headed away. And that should be the end of that one. 25 minutes gone. I mean, look at the stats. It's utter dominance. We've got a free kick now with Jude as well. Good angle 25 yards out. As usual, the wall's not covering the corner. So can he find the target? Oh, he goes the other way. Just off the woodwork. Falls for Goss on the right side of the box. Back for Merivale Austin, whose shot is blocked. McKenzie wins the header. It's away to Donnelly, but Parry's back there to win it. I mean, they're fighting so hard for every ball. At the moment, they're looking superb. Ian Lewington, our former man, has just scored for Larne. They're two all with Cliftonville. And that's a pretty ball pull from Jude. I'm not sure why we needed to see it. It's in goal with Charles. Five minutes to the break. And a very exciting game, this, as Reed heads downfield. Gets it back again. And he carries it forward. I was a bit worried there, with him on a yellow card, that it might lead to a red. And it might still. As Ferry gets it back at centre half. Looks for the ball over the top. There's two up there. McKenzie wins it though for Merivale Austin. Big switch for Parry. Can they stay on side in the middle? Scully's up if he has. And he does. It's 3-0. Parry returns the favour for the earlier assist. And Mark Scully rising at the back post. He's never going to miss him. And just like Peter Crouch, he's got a few cracking dance moves out there. 3-0 at the break. A brilliant performance. We'll give it 10 more. And then we'll start resting some of the tired legs. A really, really good display so far. As we're going straight from the kickoff with Scully. McKenzie plays along to Goss. No pressure on them. Glentoran just sitting in trying to hold that shape, but not really working for them. As Merivale Austin finds Scully. Ferry does well with it, but it's only clear to McCann. He holds up and it finds Strong on the right. They've got a chance to attack here, Glentoran. Strong cuts it inside, but Jude nicks it. Now we can break away. Goss looks for him again. Jude trying to find the pass, but it's intercepted. 
And McCann can get it in. Glenn Soren have a chance here. Drew nicks it back though. Well worked. He lost the ball. He won it back. Merivale lost in switches to parry. This could be four. Jude picks it up. Edge of the box. Options in the middle. There's five in there. Jude is one of them. Goes alone. It's a great goal from Damien Jude. His second of the season. Scored with his weaker foot. And to be fair to him, he lost the ball in his own half. And he won it back and then went and finished the move. 4-0. 50 minutes gone. And you know what? I might start resting people now. Why not? So looking at the team here, we've got McKenzie is one who normally struggles. Hamilton will come on for him. In fact, Stahl will. We'll bring on the youngster. At right back, it's going to be Reed for Murphy. Don't need to risk the yellow card. And then the other three will be Jude off for Daly. Merivel Austin off for Griffiths. And we'll bring on Dermot Lafferty on the right for Cowan. Because Whelan's looking complacent and Lafferty is our own player. So he'll be an inverted winger on attack. Five changes made, 55 gone. Now we're resting people for the cup final. It's a bit of a dream day this so far. There's a long ball forward which Stahl heads away. McAllister finds Hegarty. Really impressed to keep Stahl in the end. We got a 600 grand bid on deadline day. Chairman didn't bat an eyelid. We also sold the clause for Tom Robinson which was 120 odd grand. Is this in behind to Lafferty again? Options in the middle. Scully will make the run. He finds him. It's great football and it's a brilliant tackle I thought. But a penalty kick is given. It should be a yellow card, really. Scully will step up. He scored two today. Make that a hat trick. A brilliant performance. He's just been so good for us. 24 goals and he joined in late October. Him and Merival Austin make such a difference. As we go from the kickoff with Glenn Torren, could be another long episode with all of these highlights. Morgan with a through ball. Don't throw the clean sheet. Neil Kane off his line. Good goalkeeping. Tommy Murphy, the sub right back, can bring it forward. As support in midfield, but just going alone here. It's become a game of basketball. They've given up defensively. With Scully on side, he releases Lafferty. He's forced wide. He cuts inside. He hits the post. Oh, it could have been six. Just like the Warren Point game, we are firing in front of goal. It's 5 0. It does not flatter us at all. And with 15 to go, Glen Torren, they just need the final whistle. If I were Glen Torren, I'd just be keeping the ball at the back, but they're still looking for the goal. Fair play to them. Ray gets the ball here. They're definitely missing our players, aren't they? In Dykes and McCall Hatton. And Morgan gets the ball for them. Gives it away to Murphy. Now we can counter. Scully through the middle. Lafferty on the right. Scully beats the offside trap. He's one on one. Rounds the goalkeeper. But he doesn't put enough on it. And it's cleared off the line by the defender. It stays 5 0. Our expected goal suggested we should have got more than we did. That's one of the best performances I've ever seen. We've got six days now to relax for the cup final. Linfield have got a massive European game and hopefully they'll be fatigued when they arrive. Well, here we go. We face Linfield in the final of the League Cup. The current holders, of course, I'm pretty sure they beat us in last year's final. But we've got to give them some fair play first because they didn't get a result against Cagliari. But they only lost 1-0 at home, which is one hell of an effort against a loaded Italian side. So big effort to them. 17,900 in as well. That is a massive sign of progress for a Northern Irish club and hopefully we can back it up when we're in the next round in a few weeks time. Let's go and get through the tactical meeting though. I would expect a similar squad today. Gash and Smith will come back in and then it's just about who's fit. They're telling me to drop Mark Scully from the lineup. I won't be doing that if I can avoid it. Well as you would probably expect I've just gone like for like. We've brought Gash back in for Dunn. We've brought Smith back in for Goss. Switched the two centre halves round. And that's what we're going to do. Dunn and Goss are both among the subs. Out of the squad are Griffiths and Hamilton. And this is about as strong as we can get. Don't forget, Merivale Austin wasn't registered last time we played Linfield in the league. And we were rotating a bit then. Now we've got them in a less hectic period with our first team out. I'm feeling relatively confident. But whether that's misplaced, I don't know. They've still got Rory Lennon. They've still got Northern Irish internationals that we're managing in the international breaks for Northern Ireland. So we've got to be a bit careful because they're a very good team. But let's go and get into this final and see if we can finally start to say we're the best in Northern Ireland. Ryan Dunn is still in charge, doing a very good job for them. They've brought back a few first teamers, but the one big call from them is obviously they've changed their keeper for the Cups, which they always do. But the big call is Amari Kellyman, who is by far the top scorer in the Irish Premiership. He's a target man who can't really finish, but he plays really well for them. What they've opted for instead is Mackey through the middle. Now he's a very good player, plays for Northern Ireland. Similar level to Scully but without the height. 
So let's see how they get on playing probably a more direct and in behind style rather than up to a target man. If we can win this game, it's not just about the trophy. It gives us a big push for the title as well. We've got to try and take every little mental game we can. If we can get a psychological blow on them today, I'll be pretty pleased with it. But so far, nearly 15 minutes gone, it's been cagey with no chances. As Linfield go direct, you can see playing behind and get three players running onto it. We're playing at a ground with a big pitch again, and it might come back to harm us. They could have done with Kellyman there, as Parry finds Merivale lost in. Now, how quick can we break? Gash gets away down the right. Should be fresh, but gives it up to Patterson. He finds turns at the back, and it's into Lennon, who not let him score against us again. As Smith finds Parry. Inside to Gash. He's got a run on the right from Cowan. Got to look for it, and does. The underlapping run again. He goes alone, and he's shot straight at Doherty. Really good football from Distillery on the break. The usual method of attack and no sign of a goal. As Kane plays out from the back to Reed, we're growing into it now. Quiet 10 minutes to fill them out and now we're back to our usual selves. As Cowan gets it to Reed and Damian Jude. Into midfield to Austin and Gash. Lennon's nicked it off him here. 15 on the clock and we don't want Rory Lennon harming us again. But that through ball goes wrong. Mackenzie finds Ray. Jude out wide to Parry. Yellow card for Jude already. And now Parry's giving it away. The nerves are really getting to us here. And Ferrisage is in. Oh, you idiot. Oh, Mackenzie has flown him two-footed. That's going to be a red card. We are in big trouble. In a cup final of this ill, he's gone. He is gone. What are you doing? Duncan Mackenzie. I cannot believe what I've just watched. Now, who do we take off? I've got to make a sensible decision here. One of the big three has got to go. I either put Merivale Austin on the right. I take Cowan off. Do I even gamble? He can't play off the left, but I could play Merivale Austin there. And maybe just go for it that way. Oh, I can't believe it. Goss is going to come on and he's going to replace Ben Parry. It's a big call, but I'm going to do it. Merivale Austin will go into a position he can't actually play. But I'm going to have him as an inverted winger or even an inside forward on attack. We're going to have to drop to balance. We're going to have to counter them. But my thought process is, with three players that good up front, they'll hopefully rest people. What happened there? The penalty's taken. Goss was still in the box. He was just running away from the keeper, but it's going to count. Mackie scores it. Oh, what a disaster. It's something since the January update that has happened every single season. The big games get settled by red cards. It's a relentless thing. And it seems to be a bit too predictable in game. Mackenzie, I don't think, has had a red card for us. And that's his first one. As Brown gets the ball at right back for Limfield. This is now going to be a case of soaking up pressure and countering with three superstars. We've not got that number 10 in behind, which is one less option. Goss wins the tackle there, but it falls for midfielder of Limfield Collier. And Downs. He can carry it down the line. He's being chased, but he's not going to be caught. I'm not sure who 28 is. It's Merivale Austin working back but can't do the job. It's over the bar. This has turned into a bit of a nightmare. I cannot believe what I've seen. It's all infield. At what point do we just go for it? Because we look more of a threat push in the game. Rory Lennon, he scores a free kick occasionally. And Neil Kane holds that one to his left. I'm so frustrated at the moment. We just need to get to half time and regroup. There's a big ball out to the left hand side. Merivale Austin doesn't even challenge for it. And Collier up will cut inside. Through ball to Mackie. Could be game over. It's over the bar. I'm going to do something interesting here. Or I think interesting at least. I'm going to move Merivale Austin in slightly. Ray is a really good defender. And I don't think we're going to lose much from him being back. He can't really go forward that well. And he's good enough defensively. He's good enough physically. So just moving him into that familiar position. We've got to try something a bit different here, haven't we? Because otherwise we're just going to get beaten comfortably and it's going to peter out as Lennon gets the ball back to Buchanan. Big ball over the top from the January signing. Smith heads away to Jude. Now can we get him closer to the striker? Here he is, Merivale Austin. Back to Goss and out to Ray, who should have space on the left. Austin's now making that run outside of him. Picks it up, cuts in on his right foot and goes back to Gash. Through ball towards Scully. Well defended by turns, but it's only out to Cowan. He takes his man on on the right. Big cross towards Scully. It's a bit deep for him, but he knocks it down for Merivale Austin. The tactical change has worked. It's a moment of managerial genius. I'm sorry, I'm talking myself up. We got him closer to the front man and we delivered the crucial blow. 
Always an option when you've got a six foot eight striker. Win a knockdown and get people around them. It's one all at half time. We're holding on for dear life, but hopefully in the second half we can create a couple more chances. Linfield haven't created an awful lot despite having more of the game. And we've now got a free kick with Goss, who's also on the yellow. Both centre halves are, which is a worry. Cowan's been released down the right here. We can win it with 10 men. Imagine the confidence boost we'd get. We're not going to do it like that, though. Cowan gives the ball away. McCurr clears it, but only as far as Gash. Scully wins the ball, holds up well. Gash found again. Through ball's intercepted. Buchanan clears to Paul Ray. He's challenged by Downs. Surely a foul. Referee gives nothing. He's only on one side today, isn't he? McKay gets the ball back to Brown. He finds Downs. Through ball to Lennon. Don't let it be him. Do not let it be him. Mackey beats his man. That's brilliant. He has skinned Smith with his first touch. Lennon, the man who creates it. And you know what? I'm going to look at the chairperson and say, if you hadn't sold him, we wouldn't be in this position. It's going to be 2-1 to Linfield. We're going to have to go positive at some point. And I think that moment is going to be now. Let's go and make the other changes and see what we can do because we need fresh legs. We've got Damian Jude on a yellow. We can't take a risk. It'll be Neil Daly. He'll come on for him. I'm going to go Damian Dunn for Cowan, who's had a poor game. Merival Austin on the right. Dunn will go into that number 10 role. Paul Ray, I feel for because he's got no support ahead of him, but he's had a bit of a stinker. So Miles down for him. And then what's the other change? Do we go fresh right back as well? I think it's the best option we've got. We'll save it 10 minutes due to the fact there might be an injury or something. But we've gone positive. We're going to push. and We're going to try and get back into this. It's a hard job because, let's be fair, we're playing against a very good team. We're going to encourage the boys with 10 minutes to go. And Reed will be replaced by Tommy Murphy. Let's see how he gets on. Five to go. We've got to go attacking. And it's probably going to cost us another goal. I feel a bit weird about this. Because I said at the start we probably needed to win. but. The way we've played with 10 men has actually given me more confidence, if anything. Goss heads over. It was probably our final chance. But a moment of madness. A red card always settles the big games here this year. But we've played well and we've given them a threat. And it's been an even game with 11 v 10. Ultimately, I would sacrifice this if we do win the league title. But that's going to be a big if. We've got to keep winning handsomely. As Damien Dunn finds Stout. 40 seconds to go. This is the last wave of attack as Dunn gets down the left. Scully's in the middle. He's always an option. He's up for the header. He loses it, but Gash will bring it down. 30 seconds left. Smith goes over the top. Dunn's up. Scully's in there, but Buchanan wins it well. McCurr can bring it away. I think that's it. Big hoof downfield for Linfield. Kellyman wins it, and there they are. They've got it at the end of the pitch. They want it. Oh, Damian Dunn's got it here. One last chance to get it in behind. Gash up to Scully. He's beaten to it. I think he was off anyway. And that will be the final whistle. Some things never change. Linfield beat us in a cup final again. A moment of madness from McKenzie early on. One of those ridiculous red cards in a cup final. And it's always a stupid two-footed lunge near the start of the game as well. But this is where we are. We've got the foothold in the title race. We've got to make that count this year. But we will not be doubling our cup count. Because Linfield lift the League Cup final. A well done to them. They lift the trophy. And we've got to reflect on our disappointment. Well, a ban for McKenzie after his stupid red card. Goss has reached his points as well. So he gets a game ban too. Let's have a look at the schedule though. Because this is going to be quite tricky. We've got a lot of big games coming up in March. But I've got to prioritise Europe. It looks like the second leg of our last 16 game. Will be a few days before the Irish Cup quarter final against Lan. And that trophy is now more important, having lost this one as well. So we're going to focus on those two, I think. The European game has to take precedence. And of course, we'll see how we're getting on in the title race too. But if you enjoyed it, a big win against Glen Soren and a disappointing defeat in the cup final, then please do put a thumbs up on it. No clean sweep for us this year, but we've still got a trophy and we have still got dominance in the title race. Two points clear with a game in hand. It really is ours to lose. If you want to stay up to date and find out if we do it or whether we fall away towards the end again, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back with a head coach tomorrow as always before this returns in two days time. But thank you very much for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you back here next time for more big action in Europe with Distillery. Mm -hmm.